How you doing everybody? Hope you're having a good day. It's a nice day where I am and lots of things going on, so I'm staying busy. But anyway, uh, I want to talk about a subject today that's called, We Must Control Our Emotions. And really, this is one of the biggest problems for the human race. For everybody has emotions. And sometimes we let the emotions get the better of us. Sometimes we uh, go kind of wild with our emotions. So, to become a Christian, yes, we're allowed to have emotions, but we have to control them. And so, we're going to talk about this today because it is important. And so, one reason it's a big problem is because very few in the animal kingdom experience emotion the same way as the human does. Yeah, we, we, we've seen the the crying elephants and pouting dogs and we, we see sometimes uh, what we consider displays of emotion from various animals but by and large they don't have the same type of emotions we have we have a large range of emotions uh, all the way from anger all the way to happiness and the animal kingdom they just don't possess that and we'll explain why in a little bit so yeah, we, we've seen how some tr animals treat us, some are out to get us. I mean, like when we're walking down and some blue jay decides to swoop your head and peck you, or a mockingbird. Mockingbirds are bad for that. They chase the cats, they chase the dogs, they chase the squirrels, and they'll even chase humans. And some animals will chase after humans, and uh, we know that's true. But uh, all animals are pre-programmed to behave a particular way uh, when, when, the, when the normal changes and, and things become different. See, we call this instinct. And for the most part, we still do not know why certain animals behave in their various ways. People still try and figure out. They think they got it figured out. Like, why does your dog do this? Why does your cat do that? I mean, we still don't know. It's just all a bunch of conjecture and, th and thinking. And so... Come to think of it, we still have not figured out the many ways of humans. And so, uh, a lot of times, what they do just doesn't make sense. It's not natural. And so, trying to figure that out sometimes might give somebody a headache. But people do things uh, guided very strongly by emotions. And these emotions were given to us by our Creator. But we must also remember that our Creator wants us to control our emotions. And failure to control our emotions causes us to behave in unusual ways. And oftentimes, hurt feelings or broken bodies are, are the results. And so even death can come about if the emotions overwhelm the right, uh, or maybe we should say the wrong person. And we know that happens. People get angry and they, they lose control of their emotions and they hurt somebody or kill somebody. See, our, our relationships are forged more because of emotions than really any other factor. And the company we keep is determined by our emotions and our attitudes. Attitudes are really nothing more than expressed emotions. And so there's good emotions and there are bad or negative emotions. And, uh, of course, love is one of the strongest emotions, while anger trails a very close second. And the spectrum of emotions puts a challenge upon the human race. While we try not to hurt anyone's feelings, we still want to express our own feelings. And, of course, we know that most crime takes place when emotions are running very strong. Now, crimes of passion are directed by emotions that under normal circumstances we would keep under control and it's not good if we lose control of our emotions sometimes our emotional check is hindered maybe by the influence of drugs or alcohol and this fact has been known for years and yet we see people still behave in ways that are not normal for them and we start figuring out why well yeah they've been drinking they, they've been drinking a little bit too much and they talk in a different way than they normally do. They behave in a different way. And yeah, they might even uh, show anger and express some uh, hatred and animosity 
while they're under the influence, whereas normally they'd be a pretty nice person without the alcohol or the drugs. So whatever emotions we may experience, we still have to keep them in check. And so, you know, the Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, be angry and sin not. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not give the devil an opportunity. See, Satan uses our emotions against us. He, he, he uses them in such ways that even though we don't recognize them as a tool of Satan, I mean, it, it's the idea, okay, you harbor a ill will towards somebody, you have developed hatred in your heart, and you really don't think anything about it, but that's just one of the tools that Satan uses. Because Jesus said, anybody who hates his brother cannot go to heaven. Now, also, check that. He did say in one place, you need to hate your mother, father, brother, sister. Uh, but he's in Luke 14, verse 25 and 26. But uh, that's basically saying that nobody can be more important than me. And so that word hate really doesn't fit in there in that passage that Jesus said you need to hate father, mother, brother, sister. Now, he really doesn't mean that. Uh, I mean, so what he's talking about is we can't let anybody, whether it's a, a family member or whether it's a very close friend, take the place of where Jesus is supposed to be in our hearts. So when we're talking about anger, yes, the devil does use our emotions against us. And so when our emotions get the better of us, we lose control. And when we lose control, we are likely to sin. So let's, let's face it. We get angry. We punch someone in the face. Or we get angry about what somebody did. You tell lies about them. In some cases, uh, people have known to kill uh, because they got so angry. They had such hatred at that moment. They, they took their life. And then, of course, there's all the feelings uh, that you, you wish harm upon somebody. You, you, you're, you're hopeful that something will hurt them any way they can. I mean, there, there, there's thousands, and if not millions, of people in this country hoping that Trump would get the virus and die. I mean, that, I mean so, yeah, and that's not right. Timothy, Paul told Timothy, we're supposed to pray for our leaders. Whether you agree with them politically or not, you're supposed to be praying for them. And if you can't bring yourself to do that, then you're going to have to take that up with God because God told you to. And so you need to keep your emotions in check when it comes to politics because I know that can really rile up some people when they get all excited about that. And so all of these behaviors are described in the Bible as sin. And we're not supposed to sin. Now, another emotion we must control is love. Yeah, we want to be a loving person. We want to show and demonstrate love as uh, God tells us to love our brethren, love our neighbor, even love the lost that we're concerned about their souls and show love even to our enemies and those who persecute us and take advantage of us. We're supposed to show them love also. And then, of course, sometimes people inter misinterpret lust for love. You love your girlfriend. Well, <laughs> actually, you're just lusting after her. And so some people have that problem. They can't disassociate love from lust. And we, we must know the difference. And so one person may in a relationship may think they love someone. The other person may not consider that action to be love and they might consider man they've got an obsession and usually this is the case with stalkers this person they've in their own mind they they've decided they love this person and they're going to spend time and do what they can and sometimes uh, it does not turn out good for those who are being stalked and then of course uh, if they're caught yes they can end up in prison because they kept stalking another emotion that we have to deal with is sorrow and we have to keep that in check also. Yes, we, we, we suffer aches and pains. We have losses. We have uh, problems we have difficulties with. We, we lose loved ones. Uh, we, we lose friends. 
And so sorrow is an emotion that really can overtake us to the point of even severe depression. And that's not good. And such depression has caused some to take their own life and certainly becomes a concern for their loved ones. Some people so depressed, they basically just give up on life and they don't do anything because they think uh, for some reason they're so sorrowful they, that they're not worth anything. And that's how they behave, that's how they act. And it really takes a lot of people to give them the encouragement to get out of that. And sometimes people just don't know that someone is suffering depression. A person can come to church and put a smile on their face and greet everybody, go home, and the whole time they're, they're suffering from depression. Sometimes we don't know. So we, we need to be encouraging to everyone and who knows, maybe we'll say the right words to help someone overcome this emotion. All right, uh, happiness is also a very good emotion. And sometimes, we see happiness sometimes. Uh, when we come home, the dog is wagging his tail, jumping up and down, excited to see us. And of course, um, it could be they're just waiting to get their treat, which they expect from you every day. They come, you're coming in, oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to get a treat. And you think, well, they're, they're happy to see me. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, um, happiness is something we can have, but we must know that what causes the happiness needs to be a right thing. I mean, sinful activity uh, could cause happiness, but that's not good. We could lose our soul by staying happy with stuff. Some people think drinking uh, alcohol makes you happy. Well, guess what? God doesn't, excuse me, God doesn't like that. So whatever emotions we experience, <coughs> we need to know that not controlling them can be sin sinful and lead to sinful behavior. And Satan uses every tool in his arsenal against us. And of course, some of his strongest tools are the human emotions. When you have the type of emotion that you just despise someone, I mean, it doesn't matter if you shoot them, if you beat them up, if you uh, make fun of them, if you call them names, if you lie about them, if you gossip about them, it's all wrong. I mean, that, that, we just face it, it's all wrong. And so we have to learn to control our emotions because that's very important. Because if we don't, then Satan is going to take advantage of that and cause us to sin. And sometimes we probably won't even know we're doing it at the time. When you have animosity towards someone, I mean, you think, okay, that's just a particular problem, but I can be over that. Well, can you really? No, if you have animosity towards someone, you're harboring a grudge against somebody. And guess what? You know what that is? That is called sin, because we're not supposed to harbor a grudge against anybody. What are we supposed to do? Well, the Bible's very plain. We're to love our neighbor. We're to love our neighbor as ourself. And so, yes, uh, we're, we're supposed to treat them kindly and treat them gently and with compassion and with understanding. And so all of these things we do in our family life, in our church life, uh, in, our, when, in our public life. We have to control our emotions. So learn to control your emotions and get, check, get a check on them because sometimes they can carry you too far. Like I say, it's nice to have happiness, it's nice to have joy uh, and to be happy, but you have to be happy over the right things. And so consider these thoughts. Uh, so, Work on your emotions and consider your emotions and think about them and think how Satan can use your emotions against you to keep you out of heaven. I mean, it's not hard to do because emotions are very strong. They're very powerful for the human. And there's so many in this world who have basically not checked their emotions and they're causing lots of problems. They're continuing to sin. Of course, God doesn't like that. All right, consider those thoughts. Uh, Lord willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another lesson. So I hope you have a good and blessed day and that you will um, learn from this and maybe share it with others. 
So y'all have a good day now. Bye-bye for now.